Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another chapter of Experiencer Interviews. And today we have Kate Thorvaldsen coming to us from Norway. Kate was born in Drammen, Norway in 1969. She had her first close encounter when she was only three years old, during which she met one of the small creatures we have come to know as the Greys. She was 10 years old when she met these creatures for a second time and was taken up into a craft. She lost her sense of smell during this event, and the encounter was also reported to New UFO Norway as a light phenomenon in 1979. She was 29 years old when she had her third close encounter. She was alone in a very isolated cabin on Gall Mountain, where she had gone to work on her book. The morning after the encounter, she awoke to find several strange sharp edged marks on her right eyelid. The next evening, she discovered that her BV behavior had changed from being relaxed to being scared. When she was later brought back down to the city where there was electricity, she found that she had become highly sensitive to sounds. She could clearly hear electronic noises from many different types of equipment and even have to leave the room while her mobile phone was being charged. She had become very light sensitive and her sense of smell had returned. On January 2016, it was suggested that she should check to see if she had any implants in her. She had found a triangular shaped object under the skin on her neck, so she purchased a small neodymium magnet to see if they would attract there. The magnets also attached very easily. Further checking revealed 32 implants, which were symmetrically placed on her body. With help from UFO Norway, she managed to have x-rays taken by a private chiropractor which showed tiny black marks inside her body where the magnets had attached. She has now written a book entitled A Hybrid Story, where she tells the story of her life. This includes not only in close encounters, but also her spiritual journey and what it's like trying to live a normal life when she is so different from most people. So thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, nice to be here. Um, yeah, so I read your book and... Uh, I was amazed that uh, in the first chapter, you start talking about um, having, well, it's not really pre-birth memories. It's basically memories upon, like the birth memories, really, which is yeah. something a bit unusual because, um, you know, you're so young, you, you just came out and you remember uh, seeing stuff. So could you, could you get into that? Yeah, uh, the, the first, absolutely the first memory I have is that... Uh, the, the, the colors is ar uh, around me. It's like they are dark brown, black, uh, little orange kind of thing. And then suddenly everything turned out to be quite bright, light. And of course, that was the moment when I get out of it. Uh, get out of it, uh, get out of my mother. <laughs> and uh, then I just hear all this. The, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's voices, people talking around me. But uh, I'm not... Of course, I don't understand what they are saying or not thinking about them at all. But the, the next thing I do remember is that I'm lying on the side on the table or something, and I'm looking at my hands, and I, I have something white, very strange thing on my hands, and I'm looking at this and wondering what, what that is. If, if a child in that age can wonder, or if there was the me that's still remem remembering me as a consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what this, this was. And many years later, I was asking my mother that after I was born, did I have something white on my hands? And then she is looking at me and said, uh, yes, you did. How do you know? No, I remember. I remember I saw them. And then she can tell me that uh, I was not in a born in a normal big hospital. There are this smaller uh, place that you can give birth to kids that are very close to the hospital. And uh, the, the costume that they had is that they were having these kind of white socks that they were putting on the newborn kids' hands so they would not scratch themselves. Okay. So they're, they were like baby bittens. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They, they try to keep us warm with these, uh, these mittens and socks. So that's... Now, the fact that you're remembering that, that's quite amazing. Yeah, now here it was specific, not to keep myself warm on the hands, but that it was uh, I was not scratching myself. Wow. Oh, so, yeah. So <laughs> you, you freaked out your mom with that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's cool. So, okay. So your first meeting with the the Greys were at the age of four. Did So did, did you three, remember three anything? Three years old. Three years old, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Can you get into that? Yeah, uh, this was very close up to the Christmas time, and um, there was late. In, there was in the evening, and uh, my mother she has taken me to the bedroom and put me into the crib. And I remember I wasn't tired, so I was standing there in the crib in the dark, and I was just looking to the big, big windows that was over there. Uh, we are living on the second floor, so uh, you can see the black sky and the stars and and so. And while I was standing there, it was like the, the wall on my left side, it started to become like a blurry. And then this creature came out from the wall and he was, it, was, it was like he was just gliding up to my crib and he was standing in front of me. And I guess that since I was standing in the crib, if you think about the, how tall the crib can be, and this creature, I guess it was just a little bit like this more than me. And uh, of course, I was two years old, so I was blubbering ahead, blah, 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 <laughs> trying to talk to this thing, but it, it, it did not answer me. And it, it went very quickly when I, till I understand that we were actually communicating through our minds instead. So he, so he was giving me the feeling that he was there to see if I was okay. And then he just disappeared again in the same way he came and out through the wall and in the next moment I could see this creature with one more inside of a craft and they were hanging outside the window and of course again out this was on the second floor so there couldn't be no car or anything like that so it was hanging there for a few seconds perhaps and then whew, took off mm -hmm. and, and and of course in my head I was thinking yay Santa Claus yeah. <laughs> so the, the funny thing is that approximately one week later there was Christmas and my mother she was taking me on her arm and she was bringing me into the living room because I was going to meet Santa. Of course, I was very excited about that. But when we were coming into the living room, <laughs> there had this guy there with a red suit, plastic face and a false beard. I was terrified and I was so angry. This was not my Santa, so I was screaming. <laughs> so they had to take me back. <laughs> wow. Agree, Santa. Uh, yeah. that, would, that would make a nice ET drawing. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Now, did you, uh, as a kid, ever, well, were you afraid of the dark? You know, you're having, you know, afraid of the closet, you know, shadows, stuff like that? No. No? No, I, I was afraid of my closet uh, under the bed. Um, see, I, I, I would tell my mom at the age of three that, now, I, I grew up in, like, in northern Ontario, Canada. So, I, like, in the woods, you know, we didn't know anything about ET. So, the only thing I, I remember telling my mom that is that, that there were people in my room at night. Mm. And so I like growing up, I, I always put this as the, uh, like a yeah, fear of the dark type of thing you know, for kids. And, uh, yeah, I was traumatized really, uh, looking into the, uh, if my closet door was open. Yeah. So I, I, I did tell my mother about the, the gray okay. person or the creature that was in my room. And, but my mother, she didn't say much. And of course, later when I was grown up, then I could understand why because my mother, she didn't want to talk about it because she has seen them, seen them herself. And my grandfather has seen them too. So it, it gets, it kind of run, runs in the family. Yeah. But of course, most of the time, when you have never talked about anything like that to your husband or in the other family, then of course, then you won't tell me either. So she, she just put it in the back of her head and okay, I know what you have been seeing, but we're not talking about it. Oh. Did she have like go through bad experiences or? No, she has just seen them. Okay. So, but she can't, she can't recall that she has any close encounters or anything like that, but she has just seen them from a little bit of distance. Okay. So yeah, they didn't come to her <laughs> when you, like when your mother was pregnant with you. Not what, well, not that she, she remember now. Okay. Um, so I, I met a girl uh, at this uh, C5 meeting. And um, she, her mother, when she, uh, her, mother, when her mother was pregnant with her, uh, received uh, the visit from Grace. And the Grace wanted to take the baby, like her. And um, they said, uh, she, like, no, no, I don't want you to take my baby. And uh, so they, they injected the lady with a syringe or something. And, uh, but the thing is, when she was pregnant, the doctor scanned her and the, there was a, they saw a boy. Mm. And uh, so when at time to gave, when they gave, she gave birth, the doctor took out the baby boy 
and so they thought as you know everything was over and um so she so like moments later the the nurse starts panicking and the the said doctor doctor there's another baby and the scans <laughs> only showed once one baby and now there were two and went and they took up they took out a baby girl and that was her and she turned mm-hmm. out like a six foot two play a dn blonde girl a bit like yourself I, I I think I've seen her, seen the yeah. story. Yeah. So uh, like I met her at, at a C five. So uh, and you can really see her her eyes are like slightly larger larger than what's considered normal. So I thought her story was pretty cool. Yeah. Um. And uh, okay, so you, you you met the fake Santa Claus, and uh, so uh, you um, what happened after that? Because I know you started doing like sky watches at night. Um, well, when I was around nine, ten years old, I was very much alone, and I felt as an outsider already. I was trying in the kindergarten, I was trying in school to fit in, but I did not fit in anywhere. So uh, I started when my mother and them had gone to sleep, and I climbed out and sat there on the roof, and I was looking at the stars and the moon, and, and I was thinking that someone out there, please come and get me, because I don't belong here. So uh, one, for many, how many nights I was doing that, I had no idea. It was many. And uh, one night I was sitting there and then suddenly I was seeing this bright light above my head. That's the thing I remember. And the next thing I remember is that I'm lying in my, I wake up in my bed next morning. Okay. Um, but the difference was that I lost my sense of smell. And when I came to school, I was starting to talk about other uh, solar systems and planets and other yeah beings etc so when i i have really been giving the other kids in the class a good reason to um tease me yeah. or bully me then they actually stopped i think that perhaps they were thinking that okay perhaps we have pushed her too far perhaps she has gone nuts or anything like that but they stopped and uh, i must say even even till today i can remember the face of the teacher when he was going behind us and he was going into the classroom and because he was listening to my story and he was thinking that, oh, that kid has a crazy kind of fantasy or anything like that. So uh, since uh, I, seen, I, I did not get any kind of feedback on the people around me, so I stopped talking about it. Okay. How did you get on the, on the roof? Well, the, 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 the house that we had, it was uh, one, it, it was like the living room with a roof on top. And the building next to it that was close to it was that was two floors. Okay. So there's a window up here. So I just had to go up the stairs staircase and just climb out the window. At the age of 10? Yeah. Wow, you're adventurous. <laughs> yeah, that's I was not... a monkey. I was a real monkey back in those days. I no, was climbing I up and down all kind of direction on, on the on, on the roof that was like this. And in the, even in the winter time, was, I was actually gliding down and flying off and landed in a big pile of snow. And I was thinking, yay, this was yeah. fun. And then I was climbing all the way up again. <laughs> we have no sense of danger when we were a kid. I, I do. I, I jump off everything. If it's if there was snow, if it was high, I, I, I do it for kicks. And uh, I, I yeah. miss those days. Um, but no, the, for- I must say that uh, the, the most crazy uh, experience I had when it comes to the roofs it was the garage roof. I was playing on that one too, and I was falling down, but I did not land. So I was actually, you know, on, on both sides on the roof, and they had a roof like this. They had this uh, thing for the water. Yeah. And there's the kind of hooks that goes up. Yeah. So I was actually in, in the back of my pants, was stuck onto one of those oh, hooks. Yeah. So I was actually oh. hanging in there. <laughs> yeah. And of course, moving a little bit, and you heard it, and then. Oh, Fuck, no. I was falling down to the oh, ground. <laughs> um, it was a weird feeling. So your mom wasn't aware that you were sky watching at night on the roof? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because oh. if she did, and if she knew, I guess that she would be telling me to come back and go to bed. But she didn't. So you had, um, I think, you had regression or hypnosis to, to find out, I think, what happened that night. Yeah. No, I was uh, having uh, the uh, hypnosis after the third close encounters, and during that hypnosis, then we also figure out what happened when I was ten years old. And uh, again, I, I was sitting on the roof, and I was seeing this bright light, and then uh, they sucked me up, and then 
like typical movie or horror movie and then i was into this kind of a craft and then i just remember them around me and that's it okay so you don't remember like speaking to them no uh okay do you remember uh, like and I, and, I, and i also think that it's, it's because that when i had my third encounter uh, there's lots of things that they were doing with me then yeah uh, and then i asked them to please don't let me remember anything more and from that on everything was gray so I guess that there was a lot of things that I could have remembered from 10 years old too, if I did not ask them to make my memory turn gray. Now, you, you talked that you lost your sense of smell. Did you like wake up with blood on your pillow one day? No. So I wonder if they did something up your nose to, uh, to do that, like the implants or uh, that we'll get into. Uh... Yeah, well, when, when they, they, they put in the implants, I had no idea. Okay. If they did it that time, or if they did the last time, or if they have done other times that I don't remember, I had no idea. Okay. So I think after that um, event, did, did things st seem to uh, staple off a bit? The, 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 I think uh, things started off in, in 1993. Yeah, everything was quiet until 1993. Um, it was like, um, how to explain it? it? It felt like someone was calling you, kind of. It's, some, it's, it's like something is dragging you that makes you want want you to, yeah, to to make you to go to the window or someplace else. And I remember I was together with this guy, and in when the evening came, I told him that I was going to do some meditation. So you just go ahead and go to bed before me. So I turned off the light, and of course, when he went to bed, I was turning around and watching the windows, and I was doing that for around three days. And then suddenly they were dancing, two, three of them were dancing around in the sky. And I was thinking, okay, now I know why I had this urge to look out the window. So they were just there to say that, hello, we are here. Oh, that's so nice. Because yeah, there is a longing when there's like no, nothing happening. Uh, because I've, I, get, I, I probably got abducted with my new girlfriend in 2018. But like from 2016 to, to 18, there was a much happening. I had like a, like a sort of universe call uh, to watch out for my dad because uh, something's going to happen to him. And he, it turned out that he had an arrow go through his leg. He was hunting mm. and uh, he was bleeding in the woods. So I had that, at, uh, like a, I heard his voice at night, wake me up. Uh, he said his he, my father in my head said my name clearly, clearly. And I thought, okay, well, something's going to happen then the next yeah. day. Well, I had to get him in the woods to bring him to the hospital. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, well, I, everything that's psychic, at least, you know, the, the, the psychic experiences that do happen to me, there, there's always something, but regarding my family. Uh, um, yeah, so they're, guess, they are, they're normally the, the closest one, but it's very funny that because if you're very close to a loved one, a partner, anything like that, you will be hooked up in the same way. Okay. So you can be in the other side of the world and you can think about that person and then the person thinks of you and then they, he will call you. Oh, that's cool. <sighs> Never happened to me, but yeah, I would uh, like it though. Um, so you did, uh, yeah, into the, okay, so that's uh, like one of the chapters in your book. Did you, uh, you, you also explained that you did a uh, healing on your mother. Yeah. Uh, that one was quite funny uh, because um my mother, she was struggling with the, the um, blood circulation in, in her feet. And um, I was holding on her knees. <laughs> and everyone knows that when you're holding on the knees, then, then, then you have the bone. And of course, there's not much, it's just the skin above. It's not much fat between the skin and the bone. And I was sitting there next to her and holding her on her knees. And then suddenly it was like, let's say you have a little mouse. It felt like a little mouse between your hand on, under her skin and, and bet yeah, between her skin and her bone that was dancing around under your hand. And, it, and the next moment, it also felt like that it was like a cold little hand that was lying on top of mine. And it was so weird. And her feet, they were just lying like this for a little while. And we were looking at each other and looking at the knees and looking at the legs that were jumping and I was thinking, what? what? <laughs> What's going on? What's this going is on? weird. Wow. 
And for, I'm not sure for how long it was going on, but after a little while it stopped. And her legs were fine. Really? So I wonder, <laughs> so I wonder if there was a, like a healing done with in conjunction with an entity coming through you. Yeah, can I can have been, but still, I will always remember that little because it would have give, given you the same feeling as if there was a little mouse, uh, yeah, moving around under your hand. It really? was just super weird. Wow. I have been doing a lot of healing on other people. Never experienced that with anyone else. So I'm, I'm wondering if the, the fact that she was your mother, that you've got a, like a biological connection to her that could have helped. Uh... Well, I have been giving her healing many times. But uh, it was just that time. It was so rare. So, yeah, really. And her, uh, I think her legs improved after that. Absolutely. They did. Wow. You have to do more. You have to do more healings now. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you tried. Um, you were wondering about mind control, about uh, these curtains that you wanted. Yeah, that was actually a funny experience. Um, I before we go into it, I will first say that I think that as, as a humans, we have such a great potential to so many things that we can do. And uh, it's just it's for us to just experiencing them to figure out how they work and look into them. And I think that for me over the years, I have not been trying to do this or do that, but it's like they have been giving me the ability to just getting this kind of experiencing things now and then and just to see how it is because later on if i'm trying to do it myself with force or maneuver it myself i can't do it but then when, when i do things just like that then it works and uh, the story that you're referring to it was it's a little bit hilarious because me and my mother we were having this cleaning company so we were in this house and we were going to clean it down because it was going to be sold. Uh, this guy that had it now, it was his mother that had died. And uh, he, they were wrapping up all this big kind of curtain. It was uh, dark red velvet curtains. And I was also very much into sewing costumes. So when I saw those curtains, I was thinking that, oh, I would have loved those curtains because they could have been fabulous in that kind of costume and etc. And I asked him, what are you going to do with the curtains? And he said, well, his wife is going to have them. And I was thinking, hmm, oh, well, I would like to have them. But uh, I was like, okay. Kept on washing. And uh, at the end of the day, I was going down to the basement. And then he's sitting down there with his back to me and uh, wrapping those curtains. And when I'm going down the staircase and I'm just looking at him and I'm hearing this voice in my head that just say, and you can give me every curtains of the that you have here. And then he's turning around, looking at me, and then he says, you can have the, in, every curtain in the entire house. And I was saying, whoops, what did I do? <laughs> so was it a coincidence? Can be, but it was a very spot on consequence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and, and I've done that many times also that I did it with my boyfriend, oh. because when he was going to do some shopping into the gasoline station, and uh, I told him, can you buy this kind of a snack? And he said, okay. And when he closed the door and, and then I was thinking that, okay, if they don't have that, then you can do that instead. So then he comes out and I said, well, we didn't have that, but I give you this instead. I, and I was just thinking, thank you. Good boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shame on me. <laughs> yeah, I did that all the time. Oh, there is a, I do believe that we do have like these, these abilities. I, we might've been dumbed down. Because you know, there's a lot of um, like a, like people seem seem to be uh, to live a lot longer. You know, or like during the pre-Diluvian days, like you know, the, during the Anunnaki days. You know, the uh, when you look at the historic records, uh, the historical records, the like you know, the people seem to to live longer, and uh, they're they're more attuned to everything. And uh, we've we've been so dumbed down. Uh, and, and when it comes to experiencers, like we we've we've seen ETs, seen UFOs, we know. But when it comes to like the normal people that haven't seen those, it's hard for them to believe because they haven't seen. Um, yeah. They go on. Well, yeah, they have to go on faith. And um, again, when it comes to like, like people that remote view, to me, 
I thought that, you know, that was impossible until I tried it once. And I had something, to, I did the, the, the Monroe Institute gateway course. Uh, I, I, did, I wasn't able to like have an, an, an out of body experience, but I had like visions coming in more mm -hmm. profound. But one time I was meditating and um, I wasn't really expecting anything. I was uh, hooking up with this Australian uh, like UFO group on, on Skype uh, in 2015. And we do like this meditation. And uh, after we, I tried to like remote view and stuff like that. So nothing was happening. So I went to bed and I closed my eyes and I like, uh, what I'm seeing in my mind is the, like the, 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 the side way of, of a bald, the side face of a bald man, you know, the head, but I like all the, all I can see right, like the contours and stuff. And I saw, I thought, I thought, okay, I'm seeing something. So I started, as soon as I start concentrating on the head, it's as if it, it hooked, it, it, it connected with me and realized that I was, I was watching it and it, its head turned and looked straight at me. Mm. And then I, I was so afraid that I came out of it because uh, <laughs> I panicked. I had no idea he was uh, like connecting. And um, so, yeah, so that could have been uh, like a pre uh, type of uh, like vision or like a, I hooked up with someone. I don't know, but uh, that was yeah, as, as you said, we are uh, dumbed down or how do you say it um, to a level that we most people, they have no idea how powerful they actually are. And there's actually no limits for what we can do, more or less. Yeah. So it comes to life expand, how you look like, uh, what you can do, yeah. everything. Yeah. But of course, you have to believe it to yourself. Yeah. If you good. believe, if you um, just believe on what society and other people tells you what you are, you will get nowhere. Yeah, that's true. There's no limit to what you can do. You have to just believe in yourself, but you have to put in the time. Yeah, and, it... and the thing is that if you, if you do have big dreams, uh, a lot of people, they do the mistake that they are telling the closest one or people around them about their big dreams. And of course, most of the time, they, the other people, they will try to put you down and say, oh, that's impossible. You can't do it. And they have all these kind of things. Oh, you can't do it. Of yeah. course, a few of them will, of course, will get that um, uh, they will feel ambitioned that they will I shall prove them wrong and then they will go for it mm. but the, the the most of them they will just give up their dreams true um, it's a bit also like when you were doing Reiki it's uh, I didn't really believe in that thing in the beginning but when uh, I was dating this uh, this British abductee we, we had this uh, when she was living with me at my house, we had this like healing room and she would do Reiki and on, on people and she would share like a, a vision that would, ca uh, would come to her and she'd draw the vision. So she gave them you know, uh, that on a piece of paper. And uh, so we'd, uh, we'd do Reiki on, on the certain parts of the body and on the chakras and she'd have a, like a pendulum and she showed the, the uh, by using the pendulum over the, 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 the chakra point if her chakra, the, their chakra was uh, like moving erratically and how big it was. And after the, the Reiki session, the, the, the movement of the pendulum was like a lot more, like it showed power in the, the chakra itself. So, you, so when you're, yeah. you're like, you're, you, when you do have blockages, blockages bring a uh, disease also. Yeah. So that was a, a thing that I realized, but. Uh, I, I think that 95% uh, of us that are the subconscious, that's the part of us that makes ourselves sick. Yeah, because we have been training it so well with all the negative thoughts and beliefs that we have had through the entire life and the self-beliefs and everything. So everything is stuck there. So then you have 5% of you left that wants to, you know, to have the dreams and that you want to try to do this and you try want to do that. Do that. It's actually harder to get to, to fight against that 95% of the of, uh, subconsciousness than there is for someone that is that wants to try to quit smoking because the other one is well very well trained so yeah. you have a lot of massive wall that or body that you have to try to convince to do what you want yeah. so that that's why most of the diets or most of the trying to quit smoking or any kind of habit changing fails the ego is very powerful. Yeah. That's the lesson. Yeah. I'm trying to get my dad to lose weight. Very difficult. Trust me. He, he should try the keto diet. That works perfectly. 
but he likes to drink alcohol so that's way too much sugar too much too much calories in beers sure. <laughs> um so you've met this uh, medium in 1995 uh, betty palco i believe yes so wh what happened with that meeting well, well why did were you brought like did you have like, uh, knowing that you had to meet this person or no um I, I i was told that she was very very good and um that that's why i wanted to meet her because i also know that there are, of course the, of, of the mediums and all of those kind of people there, there is a lot of fake people too that do it do it for money but uh, of course some of them and, uh, and also a lot of them they are very good but of course you need I, I, I that's why i wanted to try betty polko because i heard so many good things about her so and I was giving uh, our with her to my mother as a birthday present too. So we left from Holmestrand and went to Oslo to see her. And uh, that, that was a nice experience. I think that I have never met anyone that really knows what you are thinking just by meeting them. It was just, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, she impressed me. So what happened with that meeting? Um, Right now, I don't remember that much. It's uh, I was just so much into my head when it comes to the UFO stuff that I wasn't into this Betty Polko tonight. And uh, no, we just had this. Uh, I, I was asking her uh, if she could see my my friends around me, and of course, then she was talking about the uh, little gray aliens. So I was asking her, "Have you seen many people that are coming into your?" room and do you see many people having those kind of aliens around them yeah, and she yeah. said no she hadn't she had just met one man before several years ago that also had little grace following as helpers so she knew about the grays without you telling her yeah she okay. saw them good good see uh, i met one i'm uh one uh one medium in my life and uh, i thought they were all hoaxes you know fakes and my mom said no uh, go see her uh, you know, people tell me uh, really good stuff about her. So I, I go and meet her and I knew something was happening with me. Like I, I started to, to be ill, like, you know, experiences have a, like sort of a higher knowing, um, they know something's off. And, mm -hmm. uh, so I decided to see her and, um, she, she tells me about, uh, this, I was single at the time and, um, she felt very sad looking at me, like watery eyes. And she was always looking beside me as if somebody was right beside me. And, mm -hmm. um, she tells me that I'm going to meet this blonde lady, uh, like in a year's year and a year and a half, not 1.5 to two years max. And then she has trouble deciding what length of hair she had. Okay. And she says, when are you going to meet her? Take your time. But I didn't understand what, what that meant. So at well, uh, long story short, uh, I met this like blonde angelic lady at Walmart's where had, she had long hair and she had it turned out that she was British. So I had, she had this really like beautiful accent. And then, um, so we like, she starts like, you know, traveling around the world and um, she, she sends me an email and she tells me that, uh, that I'm a star seed. And I thought, oh, what the, what the F is that? So I thought mm. she was like in a sect or anything. So I was a bit freaked out in the beginning. And then she starts <laughs> you know, telling me about everything, the whole ET world. And I thought, what? And then I start making connections to my past and everything up to that point. I thought, oh my God, that's so true. And the thing is, we that girl eventually there's like the huge story that we we almost got married. She stayed with me for a year. And um she but again, she had lot like the, the the medium was doing this with her, her hand. And I thought, what you know, how's that strange? And so oh no, her hair is gonna be here. But when I met her, her hair was like shoulder length. But when she came back from her trip around the world, her hair was this. Mm. Is that she went? She went to to India, and all the monkeys that were jumping on her fucked up her hair, so she had to get a haircut. <laughs> see, so but, but you know what? You know I can I can relate to that because sometimes when you see things, you can't decide as as, as in this case you, you can't decide if the hair if the hair is there or here. I had this viewing thing again uh, once uh, in a group, and when we were holding an object for another person. And I was seeing into their home, but I could not decide if when I was opening the door, if the sofa was on that side or if the sofa was straight ahead. And then she could tell me that, well, we have the sofa here. 
but the people that were owning the flat before us, they had the sofa there. Really? Wow. <laughs> um, so yeah, you had buzzing sounds happen in 1995. Yeah. Um, uh, there was this kind of a calling again. And uh, I wanted to go up there. There's a place called Eichern. It was a really, really, really beautiful place. It's a little lake and just the nature around it first. And um, I was a little scared. I didn't want, I, I wanted to go up there, but I did not feel like going alone. So I was bringing my boyfriend. And uh, it's not easy to say that, let's pl let, please, let's take a trip just in the middle of the night. We, we could very much drive around in a car in, during the daytime because that was nice, but not in the evening. Yeah. So I need to just figure out how to get him out of the house so let us have a drive because I did not tell him anything about this, these things at all. So when we came up there and there was pitch black and, and, and the clouds was very down into the treetops. So you couldn't see the sky or anything, but there was this really, really loud buzzing sound. It was like, a, um, um, what will you call it? Uh, Trafo, is that, is that trans, not transformation, trafo? You know, those, a lot of places you have these little tiny houses where there are this electrical thing on the inside and they are buzzing big time. Okay, uh, like where all the electricity's uh, plugged into and it converts all the energy? Kind of a transistor kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, but, but there, there wasn't anything like that in that area. It okay. was just forest. Yes. And we have been up there so many times before, never any kind of buzzing sound. But yes. this sound was really, it was like you were standing, having it buzzing straight above our heads. But you could not see it. There was no light, nothing. But, the, but you can hear the sound much, very clearly. Okay. So we were, um, we were listening to that for a while. And after a while, we just left the place and went back home. And when we get back home, of course, I was a little bit frustrated that I did not go up there alone. Yeah, so, something could um, have happened. Yeah, I, I, I think so. That something, something would have happened, but it didn't because I brought him along too. Yeah, I believe you. Um, that's why I like to do C fives on my own or meditate yeah. on my own. I think it's a private thing. Yeah, normally I do things that that alone, but this time I did, didn't feel like doing it alone, so that's why I brought him. Another time I was actually driving two hours to get to a certain place where I, where I had the feeling that they would show up. But uh, that time they did not show up. So I felt a little bit, hmm, that was, I'm not going to do that again. Yeah. <laughs> like when I do see fives, maybe there's like, there's a 50, 50% 50 chance that something's gonna happen. But uh, like if some, if I like go over one hour, I stop. Yeah. Um, I don't like go throughout, the, uh, do it through the night. Uh, the mosquitoes get to get me. They, they love me. Mosquitoes love me. <laughs> um, one time I was on my own this time. Uh, I was a bit sad though, but this was New Year's uh, Eve, I think. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, okay. December 31st, 2015. Uh, I was on my own uh, in the woods at my dad's place. My mom was, you know, my mom passed away. He was dating somebody else. And uh, it was like minus 35 outside, very, very hmm. cold. And, um, but again, with coldness brings no clouds. So we had yeah. perfect skies. So I go outside and I, I put on the ski suit, like with a skidoo helmet, everything just to, and it was still cold. And, uh, you know, the mask was getting blurry. And after, after like 30 minutes, I stopped doing the C5, trying to hmm. call in the craft because I was able to call in two UFOs really close to my head, to my, just above the house, let's say. And um, so I go inside and I sage the house and I, I go to bed. And during the, so, so I fall asleep. So this is January 1st, 2016. So on New Year's Day, like maybe like the three out, three in the morning, let's say. Um, so I'm sleeping and I'm on my side and I get this electric shock to my head, just the size of, of the uh, tip of a, of a finger, right behind the ears. Hmm. It's, and it's powerful. It wakes me up in a jolt. And I, I have heard that kind of thing before. Really? I have not experienced it myself, but I, that thing I, I have heard before. Yeah. Some tell me that 
when you're being taken and let's say they bring you back on the bed and they, they do that to wake you up. That's what I heard. Um, but I don't recall anything, but I, so I get the jolt and I start panicking in you know, the middle of the night, no glasses on. Um, it's black, pitch black in the woods. And uh, so I, I start kicking in the air, thinking somebody's in my bedroom. When I, so I, when I come to after a few seconds, I just look at the clock and it's 1 11 a.m., 1 1 1. And I thought, okay, well, they're just saying hello or you know, they did something that uh, you know, I just did a C5, <laughs> nothing happened, but they gave me that. So maybe it was just to shut me up, but uh, I, I was still happy something happened. But um, it's a horrible way to shock, to, to wake someone up. Yeah. That's a bad kind of humor. Well, it's better than that. Like <laughs> uh, I clapped to the face, but I, I took it as a positive thing. Um, okay. So yeah, highway, um, yeah, sighting after UFO Norway meeting. Yeah. So yeah, you, something happened on the highway, I believe. Yeah, that one was a really uh, beautiful sight. Um, I was visiting a fr the friend of mine, uh, Odd Gunnar Rød in the UFO Norway, and we were talking the late, late, late at night about these kind of topics. And uh, I remember that when I was going to leave there, I was going out the door, closing the door behind me, I, and I felt that someone was watching me. And then I was thinking that, nah, it's just because that we have been talking about this kind of stuff. So I just pushed it aside and for it for hey. Um, <laughs> and I put myself in the car and I drove off. And when I come to the highway, it, there's this, on, on the old highway, there was certain areas, there was no light along the way. Yeah. So I had the normal light on the car and just in a second that I was going to turn on to the long distance light. Yeah, the high beams. Then I hear this clear sound and then this clear voice into my head that said, turn the lights of the car off. And before my the reasonable self me could start arguing and saying that, well, I can't do that because if I do, I won't see anything. I did turn the lights off, but of course I did not drive that fast. I was almost sneaking through the on, on the road. I was alone there. And then in the next moment, it was like this light show dancing around in the sky like this. And someplace it was like orange and it was like brighter, like white, and then a little yellow and orange and bright white again. So it, it was really filling up the big sky here. And then it's then it was gone. And I was thinking, and I was sitting there on with, with the wheel in my hand and I was, looking like, oh, please give me more, give me more. <laughs> Don't let it stop, it was, wow. <laughs> so yeah, that was incredible. And, and, and if you have been looking at a, at a blitz, then you, have, you will still see the marks on the, on, 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 in your eyes. And the thing is that after this was dancing around on the, on the, on the sky, the root and, and the, the, the mark was still there. So did you completely turn off the, the lights or did yeah. you, okay. So you, you were like sort of driving blank with no lights at all? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> very, very slowly, very, very okay, slowly. Okay, okay, thank God. <laughs> so yeah, I was glad yeah. that I did turn it off because that the light show there, wow. Yeah, yeah especially if there's no, you know, because there's, there's a lot of uh, like light pollution. So that that's why I'm, I'm looking to buy a, a house outside of town because we can't see nothing really. Because of that. Yeah. Now here wow. there's a big, big fields uh, where there's more or less no houses and everything. So it was quite dark. Okay. So that was a good thing. And this was no laser because I know how a laser looks like and this cannot be anything like that. Okay. So this was really dancing and it was really bright light and moving in all kinds of directions and bright again. And yeah. So, okay. They did, they did power ups, like small, big, small, big, or. Um, for me, it felt like more like when it was more on the same spot or getting closer to you, kind of that it was okay. more white. Okay. That's the feeling that I get. And then when they're moving around, then they had a different kind of uh, the, the yellow and the, the more orange, and then up to white again. So it was that range with the colors. So the, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you got a light show. Uh, it shows that they do care about you. That you know they like they're coming every now and then to say hello. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. So you started getting uh, downloads after that. Astrophysics. Yeah, <clears throat> that was a really 
life-changing event. Um, back in those days, I did not have the cleaning company yet. I was having the, uh, I was doing this, I was making clothes, wedding dresses, party dresses, etc., for people. So I was standing down in my basement where I had my sewing room and I was making a wedding dress and I had bad timing because lots to do and too little time. <laughs> so trust me, physics was the last thing I was ever thinking about. So uh, I remember I was standing there and making this clothing and suddenly I'm having this um, numbers that comes into my head. And I was thinking, hmm, okay, what's this? And then it repeats itself several times. And okay, well, hmm, did not tell me much. And then I starting to see this like a single uh, strand with pearls and then one more showed up and then they started to look like a helix, <laughs> the, the DNA, yeah. but without the bindings. And then it built itself up and built itself up to a very, very um, complex picture. And in the next moment, it was like someone was just taking my consciousness the, from the back of my head and just <laughs> sucked it up, out. And in the next second, I'm not in my, my sewing room anymore. I'm, it's like a, that I'm not even hanging in space. I'm just hanging in something like looks like an emptiness thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking into this big kind of donut thing with this uh, pearls, the, the strands of pearls that are very complex image. And there's a big light that is surrounding this, all of these strands. So it, it was just like a wow. And I knew that this was the total of everything. And in the next moment, then it's like they are dragging me into one of those pearls, into one of those spheres. So I'm going into one of them, and then I'm seeing something that looks like a DNA with the electrons flying around, but it's not. And then I'm following the whole thing and, and everything and getting the understanding what's happening until one of them is exploding. And then I'm following the whole thing from the Big Bang until now, what's happening, and then and at the end of it, that the side, then I could see our planets, our own solar system, and then I was back in the basement. Wow. So when I was standing back in my basement and I was holding my clothing and I was like, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Wow. So, wh so what's your um, feeling on that? What did you see? Well, the thing is that everything it's like when, when they are saying that if you're going to learn about an engine, you are seeing the entire engine first, and then you are learning about how every of the different parts, how they work afterwards. Okay. Because if you just learn a little bit of the here and a little thing over here, you will have no idea how the engine works or how the engine looks like. Because you are just focused here or you're just focused there. So they were just showing me the whole engine first and everything else that they have given me is like that I have been learning about the different other parts of the engine, how everything works afterwards. So uh, I know I've been mentioning that before and a lot of people have, are still waiting for this book and the book, this book takes time and I'm mm. having this. Okay. Of course, this is, not the, this is not the book, but hopefully my book, book will be sick too. So this is my next book. The, the creation where the consciousness and uh, where the science, no, where the physics and the consciousness meet. Nice. Have so, you had, uh, have you had any problems regarding that? Because uh, the governments don't seem, uh, they don't like us coming out with these uh, ideas, hypotheses, and uh, like technology ideas. So, they, they, have you ever had problems with them? No. Good. I, ha I haven't been doing much uh, advertising yet either because this book takes a lot of time to make and I was hoping to make 3D kind of pictures on the inside and uh, I had a few people that was going to help me but the, the, it was too difficult for them. So um, I guess I will have to try to make the pictures myself but it's, it's super difficult. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can see the pictures so good in my mind but trying to put them down, it's, it's difficult. Okay. Because uh, I've heard a lot of stories about, and, you know, and personal friends when they talk about certain things, certain technologies that they've seen on craft. 
and then the the, uh, the sometimes they get military uh, harassing them after that mm. if they, yeah if they're too public or so yeah we do have to be careful but yeah um yeah. there was a yeah gall mountain 1997 that was uh, a pretty cool one yeah <laughs> Well, uh, Gould Mountain, that is uh, really far away from the from the cities. I was uh, 20 kilometers from the next house. I had no car. My friend in the UFO Norway, he was driving me up there. So trust me, it was a little bit hmm, feeling when I was standing there alone on the road when he was driving ahead. In I could just see the red dots disappearing from his car. And then you know that you are all alone in the mountains on this cabin yeah. and I was supposed to be there for two months working on this book so <laughs> but uh, that those two months they become quite <laughs> short okay. very short I guess I have been there for a one week or something and um, it was so nice it that place if you're really going to have a nice place in a cabin it must be that quiet that you can hear the quietness yeah it's just wonderful so if I needed something, I just had to put skis on my feet and walk a long way. There was, there was this tiny, tiny little store on the other direction that I can walk on, on ski to get to get some supplement and then get all the way back again. So uh, I brought my cat with me, so that was my only company, and we had a good time. So I was working with my book, writing and doing all the kind of chores that you had to do in the, in the cabin with firewood and everything. And there was no el electricity there. So it was just the solar panels and a little bit of that. Okay. This was in the early days with the solar panel. Yeah. And I did have my mobile phone, but uh, it wasn't working much <laughs> up there. So I had to be very careful with the little power that I had left on it. So uh, I woke up in the morning and I was thinking that, hmm, am I going to get sick or anything? Because I felt my nose was sore. And when I was looking myself in the, in the mirror, I could see this. Um, my face was like normal, but it was like clear marks at like a grip kind of thing on my eyelid here. This was no pillow marks. I had pillow marks in my face before, but you can't compare it. This was, you can see it was solid. And I had this kind of gray, uh, gray greenish liquid that was dried from my eyes and from my nose. It felt weird. And I was thinking, uh, hmm, okay, getting sick. Nah. But then, of course, I was in a lonely cabin, then you have to do things. And when you're doing things, uh, preparing all kinds of firewood, et cetera, et cetera, then this goes a little bit more in the background because you have to all the other chores that you have to do. But when the evening came and it was dark again and it was time to go to bed, I was becoming like a restless animal in a cage. <laughs> from, from being a very relaxed, enjoying the stay up there, I was stressed out because my entire body told me that something had happened, but you don't remember. Mm. So it was super stressed. So everyone that has seen a stressed animal in a cage, they know how they are. Uh, I think I was reading the same magazine perhaps 20 times the next night because I didn't want to, I did not want to fall asleep. So I was thinking that, you know what, I, I can't do this. So I was then using my phone and I was finally connected to the people that owned the cabin and I asked them, like, can you please come and get me and pick me, get me back down to the society again tomorrow? And uh, next day I was packing up and I was sitting there in the living room waiting for them to come. And imagine here, everything is quiet. And then suddenly two big men steps into the veranda with big boots and they're talking at the same time. I think I was upside under the roof. This yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, they shocked me a little bit. <clears throat> and of course, then they brought me back to, the, to their place. And, and of course, the first thing you do when you have a mobile phone, that is to bring your mobile phone charger, stick it into the wall, and wow, I got a surprise. Because everyone <coughs> more or less know how a microphone sounds like when a microphone is screaming. That sound is terrible. 
that was the sound I heard when I was putting my mobile phone charger into the wall. Mm. So I could turn my back on and I can take it in and out and I knew exactly when they put it in because they, of course, they wanted to test me. Okay. And <laughs> the light bulbs, if they had some CD on, you could hear this tick, 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 tick inside the CD. <clears throat> you could hear absolutely everything from the electrical devices and people, they were talking super loud. So I was having these paper dots putting, sticking into my ears for a long time ahead just to keep the, the voice level down. And um, my eyes was uh, in a light sensitive and of course the hearing was terrible. And uh, when my friend from the UFO Nora picked me up again and we were going back to his place and he had bought me this perfume that I used for his sake, not for mine. So I was taking it on, went out to his office. When I came into his office, I just had to turn around and walk inside to the bathroom again because I needed to wash it off because mm, oh, it was too much. Then my sense of smell was back. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So a lot of people, they were wondering when they could come to my place and uh, are you looking at the TV? Why don't you have the sound on? I do have the sound on. So you had um, eventually uh, a hypnosis to, to find out. Yeah, uh, because of the, the, the smell thing and my hearing and everything. And of course, my, my friend, he saw the big difference in me from when he was driving me to the cabin and the other person that came home from the cabin. It was a huge difference. So um, then you have Norway, they have this guy that they are using for hypnosis for people that are having experiences. So we went in there and he put me under the hypnosis. And then I could tell that when I was in the cabin, I went to the bed for the night. And then I woke up and I saw this bright light standing in the door. And in the doorway, then I was standing this tall creature. And it's not like the rest of them because normally they don't have, it looks like they don't have any kind of clothes on, but this one looks like it has like a kind of a transparent skirt or dress on him. And, and everything is like, it's shining. So it's uh, different from anyone, anything else I have seen before. And it's like that I'm gliding from the bed and I'm going with, into the living room. And in the living room, it's like I'm hovering in the air and I'm having this tree of the small ones, small gray ones around me. And the other tall one is standing next to the side. And then they are putting this kind of a helmet on my head. So on the, the helmet thing, then I could remember this grip. And the grip thing was because it was probably necessary for the <coughs> helmet to be <coughs> really tight and stuck on my head because the thing that they were doing, it reminded me of a bad horror movie because you had this kind of arms, as you can see on the pictures, it's like these arms that goes around here with the kind of forks thing that was going into my nose and these needle things that was going into my ears. And from the year I was 10 years old and especially after I was around 30, I really, really hate if someone trying to touch my nose, I, could, I, I will actually punch them if they do it. If someone tried to do it for fun, I will punch them. So, uh, I, I, I can't stand it. And the thing is, I, I have been watching open heart surgery, eating pizza at the same time. Ah. Don't bother me because I think it's interesting. But a nose operation, I walk into another room. Okay. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that. I can't look at it. So, um, and, and so that, that's what, that's what was, was happening. And during that time, when I could remember that, then I asked them through um, during the hypnosis and uh, to the gray ones that please don't let me remember anything more for, for because of the split of the second second there. I remember what happened when I was 10 years old oh, that we yeah. were talking about earlier. Okay. So I guess you're, yeah, you're the physical really felt the, the trauma, but the, the mental what was wiped out until you got regressed and you yeah. Remember every, yeah, you did remember everything. Wow. No, no the, and the thing is that I, I know for sure that uh, if your body experiences something very traumatic, they, they can actually heighten your senses. Um, a few, uh, several years back now, it was when I was living here, I think it's around six, seven years ago, I was having a surgery and it almost killed me. And uh, when I was coming back home, then my hearing 
and my eyes in the, the sensitive of the eyesight and and the sense of smell and everything was a height a little bit but comparing to when i was in that gold mountain you can't compare at all mm. wow. and even that one here in the hospital almost killed me so they you weren't really abducted that time they actually did a house call yeah it happens there yeah okay wow um okay buddha in the sky that was that was funny can you get into that story that chapter? <laughs> yeah that was actually a nice nice very very nice story um no i was in onto this alternative festival and <laughs> uh, there was this shaman shaman woman there and she, she wanted us and a lot and, and the group to follow her into the woods and we were going to sit down there and we were going to meet our totem animal or totem yeah, yeah. so i was sitting down there and yeah the only thing that i was meeting as a totem animal there must be a mosquito or flies zooming around my head and i was just <laughs> the other one they were in deep trance and i was, nah, I, I don't get anything out of it <laughs> so in but in the moment that i just give it up trying then i suddenly saw that i was just seeing this big cloud hanging up here and there was this uh person like like from the bosom and up bare top uh he, it was like he was uh it wasn't easy to see if it was a woman or a man uh, will you call it androgen or yeah androgynous yeah yeah and um, he has this kind of a crown and he has the big necklace here and he was smiling this hmm, smirky smile at me and then the next moment i can just see his hands doing this to me and then when he's opening his hands you can see this lotus flower that was just un unfolding so i was just wow but the funny thing is that i have seen many visions in my life but they had never been pink and in this movie uh, or this vision everything was pink the cloud everything was pink but of course he was a darker skin kind of so so he, but still he had this like a the, the pink like, like a film that was on, on top of it transparency there so it, it was weird so uh, and, and when i came back i just told the the shaman woman that well i did not get any totem but i got this instead so she was just laughing and saying hmm yeah <laughs> you are already initiated or how you will call is yeah. that the right word yeah could be yeah makes sense so uh, yeah so, so i'm wondering <laughs> sometimes if it could have been like something like someone from another world because you know we we're used to having blue skies but you know on other planets there could be uh skies with different uh, colors so you know it's just a thought though hmm. interesting um so you, you had your first conference i think in 1998 yeah so in was this UK. the first time you was this the first time you came out no uh i was doing in uh, ufo norway and uh, when ufo norway and the other uh, ufo group in norway neti okay they had a one year celebration in oslo so that was the I think that was the first time I was doing it on the outside, but there was also this alternative festivals and conferences, big areas that they had in Oslo that I was also pretend, um, also present presentation on it. Yeah. Where was this located in 1998? Uh, Oslo. Oslo, okay. Because I know you did one in the UK, I believe, too. A conference. Yeah, um, that one in, in the UK, that was... Um, yeah a weird experience um of course it was the first time i was also going to do the kind of a presentation in english yeah because english is not my first language <laughs> so i remember i was sitting there on the first row and uh old Gunnar, my friend he was having the lecture and of course he was more well he was more known and he was traveling a lot on different conferences and used to speak english and i remember it was my, close to my turn and i was sitting there and i, I felt you know stiff of fear yeah. <laughs> so uh, when i was going to start talking it was just okay will there even be a voice coming out but for some strange reason it was someone like turning the button on it it went quite okay <laughs> what was the name of the conference 
Um, Bufora. Bufora. Okay, I, I got a picture for that. Okay. You, you also met Daryl Sims at that conference, I believe. Yeah, he was there too. That was the first time I met him. Yeah, you were so young. Oh, look at that. And that was so funny. It was so hilarious when we meet up the first time. Okay. Now, uh, it was a funny story with Daryl because uh, me and Gunnar, we were staying in Philip Mantle's and Susan Mantle's house. And uh, Daryl, he was supposed to come during the night. So uh, I'm, I'm going down to the kitchen as the first one in the morning. And uh, I meet Daryl in the kitchen. And I say, hello. And Daryl looks at me with big eyes and he said, Oh, Gunnar, did you have a sex transplant? Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? He knew that old Gunnar would be coming because they had met before. He was not expecting me. Okay. So that's why, listen, that's why, old Gunnar, do you have a sex transplant? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, we, had, we had a funny time. I remember my first conference in uh, Portland, Maine. I spoke at Experience of Speak in 2016. And I was the one, uh, Richard Dolan was speaking there. And he's the, he was my master of ceremony. And he, uh, sorry, so he introduces me. So I was the first speaker to open up you know, this year's uh, conference. And I never spoke out at a, at a conference before. I had two shots of, uh, of alcohol just before. So I, I like to say my, my, my two best friends were gin and tonic. Does that really okay. help me calm down because... I was stressed as hell. We yeah, had good <laughs> memories though. Um, but you, you, you can imagine how you, you would be feeling if you were coming to Norway and you were going to have your first presentation ever in Norwegian. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it was worth it though. But I, I'm yeah. sure you enjoyed it though. I did. I did. We meet these individuals at these conferences and they're, they're lovely souls and they, uh, some of us share their stories and it's, it's mind blowing. and. Now, there was a, uh, a vision of a tsunami that I thought was pretty powerful that you got that, of something that, that happened in Thailand. So you had a vision prior to uh, a catastrophe. Yeah, um, I was living in a place called Fredrikstad back then. And uh, this was um, that date. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm bad at dates. There was too much stuff going on in my head right now. Uh, so I, I remember I was standing in the bedroom window looking out in the fields and we were supposed to go to bed. Uh, my boyfriend, he was in the bathroom and doing his kind of stuff. And I was standing here in the window. There was no street lights. It was just the light from the moon that was shining on the field on the outside of the window. And suddenly out of the blue, it was like, let's say if you have, have some water and you spill a drop and you have these rings, yeah, it goes water. like this. Okay. And a lot of times also, if you see looking at television, if someone is uh, trying to make uh, similar as an earthquake or anything else, there'll always be like these rings that goes out. Yeah. So it was very funny because, or weird, because when I was standing there, it suddenly it was like these white rings that was coming from me. I, it was like I was a center. So I could see these white rings go out through the walls and even out on the, 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 the lawn on the outside before they just disappeared. So it was several rings that just went like this and then they just disappeared as they came. And I was wondering, what's this? I had no idea. So when my boyfriend came from the bathroom, I told him that, you know, I had just had this weird experience and he could not give me any kind of answer either. So we just went to bed go to sleep. And the next morning when you're turning on the news, then we saw the big tsunami in Thailand and everything. And when we were looking at the clock, our time by their time it was actually the same time so you fit yeah it's like the mother earth gave you a signal you were like receptive to it and uh... yeah and, and and the thing is that i i think there was this uh, science guy who said that there was this one centimeter shift kind of thing on the earth plate itself or something like that okay. um I'm very bad at trying to explain that kind of thing because this is not my my field. So this was measure. They are measuring instruments all over the earth, so that could get this thing. So they were talking about one centimeter changing something okay. when this happened. <laughs> so I guess that that's what I, for some strange reason, felt, and why I should see these white rings that goes out like this. I had no idea, wow. but perhaps it was 
those signals were just turning it into a sim symbolic thing that I could understand what it was. Okay. Wow. I know animal can sense those things, so why shouldn't humans? True, true. Um, uh, okay, death by the bed. Uh, this happened in 2006, I think with your friend that passed away. Yeah, that was my dear friend, John. Uh, I came to know him uh, after he was, uh, he heard about my UFO close encounters and he was very interested in that. And he was also a pilot. Uh, when I met him, he was on a sick leave, so he was not flying. But after a little while, when the operation of his knee was good again, and he was starting to fly again, and he was also training other pilots uh, with, this with the bigger planes, not the small airplanes. And he wanted me to come along on a recognition trip along the coast of Norway. And I was supposed to meet them in, in Bergen. And uh, I was, then the day came close up and I was trying to call several times and there was no answer. And I was calling and calling and calling again, still no answer. So of course I was wondering why he's not answering. And I remember I was going to the bed for the night and this was when I was living on the west coast of Norway too. And um, this figure that suddenly appeared beside my bed, I was not falling asleep when this, before this happened. It, it looked, uh, the clothing kind of was the same old thing with laces, uh, etc. <clears throat> but it could also look like the Ripper, but without the, <laughs> the, the knife thing. And he was on the side of my bed, but for some strange reason, I did not feel scared. And then he was just gliding around my bed. And when it come to this side of the bed, and I sitting more up, and I was looking at it, and I felt this compassion for it. Weird. Instead of being afraid, I felt compassion for it. Because it was like I could feel the kind of loneliness kind of thing in, into this thing. So I felt like that, okay, I want to give you a hug. I sound completely nuts. I know. <laughs> Who wants to hug anything like that? It was more, it was more like an emotion-driven thing than logical. And when I was going to touch it, it was like I could feel something, but then it, everything was disappeared. So I was thinking, okay, this was a weird experience. And of course, then I was trying to sleep and fall asleep eventually. Next day, I was trying to call again, still no answer. And then I was putting on the news. And then they could tell me on the news that there was this big plane with, air, with the several pilots, also than my friend, that it has the, 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 the plane has gone down into the ocean. So they found it on 300 meters deep. So he was dead, but was still even till today, I wonder that I have been seeing dead people many, many times in my life. <coughs> Why did not he appear as himself? Why did he show up looking like that? I had no idea. My dad, when his mom passed away, um, so my grandmother, uh, one night, uh, so my, my dad started having experiences after I, I, I showed him, when I called in my second UFO. He saw it, he came out of the house and saw it when it was a bit farther away because it, it did a, a slow flyby. So, that particular night, my dad felt um, sometimes uh, like taps. I, I would get a lot of taps happen during the night to wake me up from, I don't mm. know, for what spirits to go, uh, ETs, I don't know. But he had a tap and he said he felt like uh, like uh, somebody like uh, tapping his wrist, but like mm. he felt the energy go through his wrist. So, you know, sometimes yeah. he'd wake up at night. One time he woke up and he had this sort of shadow entity right beside his bed. Uh so like, yeah, blacker than the, the surrounding blackness of the, the bedroom, but you could see that it was an entity. And, uh, but this yeah, was but... like happened not too long after his mom passed away. Yeah, this one here was more than a shadow because it was like, you, you could see that the oldness of thousands of years kind of in that kind of clothing or the, the thing that was just hanging. So you saw like death itself. It was like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it can look like that. It was this black hole with a kind of hoodie thing and everything down. Wow. And it was, it was like a mix, like the typical death that you are thinking when you're thinking of him or those dementors, dementors or, yeah. Yeah, in, in the Harry Potter movie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. 
So that, well, that's, I'm, I'm amazed that you weren't creeped out. I would have panicked a bit, but. Uh, no, I, I have this weird kind of um, how to react many times. I'm not yeah. getting scared. Yeah. I guess, um, and I'm thinking later, perhaps I should have been scared at this moment, <laughs> at this, this point. Sometimes but, I wonder uh, if we're not being manipulated to not panic. When I had, I didn't know anything about ETs, but in 2008, 2007, that's when I woke up in the morning to have this uh, sort of uh, upside down pick or like a pear-shaped head with big round eyes. And, I, and the head was floating and I could see like some, some I, it was semi-transparent, I could see through it, but it was hmm. floating in front of me and, and I thought it was a, just a ghost, but yeah. It's either like the face of a gray or, 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 or an ant person. It was just, mm. looking, just looking at me for like uh, 30 seconds. So, but I was super calm. So yeah. why? So I'm, that's why I'm wondering, <laughs> are we being manipulated to be calm, to, to accept what we're looking at? Well, sometimes I think that it depends on what kind of thing that they are sending out. Mm. If they don't send out anything that you can feel as a threat. Okay. Yeah. Then you, of course you will be calm too. I think that uh, even if we are grown up, there is always a little child on the inside that are curious. True. What is this? Who are you? Yeah. It's like I, I was, two, kids, kids, two kids meeting each other. Who are you? Yeah. I was happy though. But <laughs> I, I thought it was a ghost, so it, I didn't really panic because of it. The writers in the sky. That was uh, quite something that you, you, you saw. the. Uh, yeah, that was uh, fabulous. Um, that was in 2010. And uh, that yeah. was actually outside here. Okay. I was working in my garden and uh, it was a clear blue sky and I was doing my stuff. And then I suddenly I was just, okay, what's that? Yeah. And I was squinting, I was doing all kinds of things. And I was looking again and again, and it was like this, in a far, far distance, but you, but it was still that you can see the shape of the horse and the person that was sitting on top of it, all white. And I was thinking, oh, what? The, yeah, I'm not going to say that word because then you have to censor me. And I had no idea. I never seen that before, never seen it afterwards, and I had never heard about it. But of course, then I was t I was telling it to my mother, and then she is saying that. Well, in the Bible, you actually have the four riders. And you have, uh, you have a white one, you have a red one, and you have the hunger, and you have the death. Yeah, famine, think, death, uh, war. Yeah, so, so I Googled it, and I found a little bit of information, but not much. And I said, OK, hmm, well, I saw the white one. And uh, a friend of mine. Uh, he actually found a picture, very, very old picture. I'm not sure if it was around from the 14th century. century or yeah. something. One of the great painters there yeah. that actually had painted this uh, person. And in the sky, he had the white horse and the white man on the white rider, even there. So even today, I'm thinking that, OK, what was it that I saw and where did it come from and where was it heading? I had no idea. It was so weird. Why should I see anything like that? So yeah, I, I, I can't explain it. It was just weird. So yeah, you basically saw, well, thought that it could have been like one of the writers of, uh, of Apocalypse? Well, it must have been. That's have been. the only thing I can find on online or yeah. anywhere that anyone is talking about a white rider. Wow. And I know that I'm so, I'm I'm not the first one that I've seen it oh. because it has it's, it's in the Bible. Mm. It was in those pictures that is painting in the 1400th century. Okay. So wow. yeah, and I guess there's even more picture of it yeah. over the over the centuries, but. Uh, oh. Why I didn't see it, I have no idea. Can't explain. <laughs> uh, and it was not a bird. No, no. Trust me, you can't see the difference from a running horse and the legs and, and, and a person sitting and on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
there was one story I really uh, was intrigued about. I think you had an OB in 2013. Uh, the chapter is called Guest by the Bedside. Yeah, that was also in this house. Um, I have a lot of other experiences that is not about the UFO stuff. Uh, here is, was in this house, the, the old baker that owned the house before he's still here. But, um, and he have, of course is up and down in the different floors, but it's more or less most of the time in the basement where the bakery was before. And of course in my mother's living room because there was the uh, cafeteria when everyone was. <clears throat> but up here there was a woman that was coming. I had went to the bed for the night and the door was closed to the kitchen. But in my visual, the way I was seeing it, it was like the door was opening and someone was coming in, into the room. You could hear someone's coming into the room, but you could not see it. I was lying like this on the side on the bed and this thing was sitting down beside me in the bed. It's like something invisible, but physically sitting down in the chair or now in the bed beside you, you will feel that. Mm. And in, for a split second, it was like when I was lying here, it was like my consciousness was out of my head, up there on the outside, on, uh, up there on the roof, looking down at myself and on the person that was sitting next to me. So I can see this, it was like a woman figure sitting next to me. And then the next second again, I was back in, inside myself again. Okay. And uh, then everyone, I think that everyone knows how the feeling is that if you're lying under a blanket and someone else is lying on top of the blanket, you will feel that you are lying like in this kind of cocoon, cocoon yeah. kind of feeling. So this invisible thing that was again visible was lying behind, behind me in bed. And it was, I, I felt like, yeah, I felt like I was lying in a in cocoon with the blanket. Yeah. But you know what? I, I felt like, I felt safe. It felt good because oh, I was sad yeah. before it happened. So this person came in and actually comforting me. So even if I did not have any connections here on this side, I could still have someone that wanted to help me on the other side, comforting me. So I actually fell asleep with this thing lying behind me. Oh. That reminds me, um, prior, I had an open heart surgery in 2016 and all my experiences up to that, <laughs> the night visitations being tapped, the voices telling me about stuff. That, 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 uh, I had like a sort of an angelic event. All these really helped me cope with, you know, my possible death, you know, at the hand of, uh, you know, being, uh, having your, your chest ripped open. Mm. Um, so, yeah. So I, I guess I felt blessed. I was happy that these events, because, you know, you know that there's something out there. Uh, um, so your, uh, so your house is still, did you have any like, like, like paranormal stuff, like yeah, see, like I have, I, my trash bin would open and close at night. So I'm wondering okay. if you had something happen to you like that. Well, uh, a lot of things is going on in this house. Uh, when I'm working down in the basement, I have a gallery there too. Then suddenly this baker, you can, you don't see him clearly. You can just see the surroundings of him, a little bit transparent kind of guy, okay. and you, you know who it is. Okay. And I'm thinking that okay, just do what you need to do. I'm doing my stuff. So that's, that's just fine by me. And, <laughs> but the thing is that, uh, that was, this was on 9th till the, the 9th till 17th of May, our national day. Uh, I think there is around five years ago, something or six, perhaps the time is running so fast. Uh, my mother, she was watching TV and then she went to bed and the next day she was going to turn the TV on again, but there was no picture. There was absolutely no picture on, on the on the TV. And you know this, uh, I think it's, the name is SCART cable. Okay. Uh, this is a special kind of cable with this big thing that you're putting, connecting into the uh, <laughs> little box that you have under your TV. Mm -hmm. And you are also connecting to the TV itself yeah. to get, they get the pictures. This cable is a quite a big, massive cable. It was gone. And we were, we were searching under the sofa, behind the TV, we, even the, 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 
shelves that every, the TV and everything was on, even if it was pushed all the way into the wall, we dragged it out just to see if it, it could be under there, nothing. We could not find that cable. And there has been no one in the house. So uh, luckily for her, I had an extra one upstairs here. So I brought it down so she could watch the television. So yeah, there's a lot of been, lot of things been going on up here. I have been sitting in a chair here in the living room, and then it's suddenly you can feel this kind of a, kind of a hand that is doing this on your face. So uh, you're you're never alone. No, that's fun. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, as long as they're not naughty. Um, first thing I did when I bought my house, um, not the one in my I'm in right now that I'm renting an apartment, but my first house, I I've said that you know to my family that passed or, you know, to the souls that knew me beforehand, uh, you're welcome to come and visit as long as you protect the house. Yeah. And that moment, from that moment on, that's when I started getting my trash bin opened up uh, past midnight and I get taps on my, like every, every month, like double tap, sometimes twice during the same night, it would wake me up. So this happened up, up until 2016 when I got, I had my, hopper, my operation and, and it, it all stopped after that. I guess, I guess if someone was starting to tapping on me several times at night, I guess I would ask them to, to stop. take a yeah. hike. <laughs> I was alone. I was single at the time. And uh, I felt like happy that somebody was actually you know, taking the time <laughs> and say hello. Yeah. Um, now, this is, you know, this chapter, implants. Now, this is the reason why we, uh, I found you on the net. Um, you decided to have a look into it. Yeah. No, the thing is that after all this kind, all, all of these close encounters uh, over the years, we have been joking a lot uh, about implants because I, I have heard about a lot about other people. For example, Daryl Sims, when he was he was talking, his lecture back in those days was also about implants, and he was also showing me different kind of implants that they have. He and Dr. Roger Lear has been operating out of people, and of course. From 1998 till 2016, there was many, many years between, and a uh, lot of years of joking. Perhaps I have implants, perhaps I don't. And then uh, another friend of mine, Sid, uh, Sid Goldberg from the from USA, USA, he was from Canada first. <coughs> he had been working with also several cases with implants. So then he tells me that why don't you buy one of those small neodymium magnets and try to stick them on to see if they stick. And I said, okay, I can do that. Uh, back in those days, I had this triangle shaped thing that I could feel on my neck. So uh, I thought, okay, I buy the magnets. But of course, going from the, the feeling that going from joking about having it, then buying the magnets, you're putting it on and it actually sticks. It's just, oh, a okay it's like you you need a few rounds with yourself just to digest yeah. that the magnet is actually sticking so and then uh, the friend of mine said that okay your nose has been closed since you were 10 why don't you try it on your nose so now i have one of those small oh, yeah. one here yeah. and of course now i have some makeup on so as you can see wow it will not fall off. I can do it here. It will not fall off. If I take it, let, let's say here, Oops, okay. then it falls off even if I just. Yeah. So it's not the makeup. No. Okay. So, so, whoops. So as you can see, it will, it will fall off. It has to be on the right spot. Wow. So uh, then we had a re little research party. So we found that I had two here, both here, here. Uh, I have five in the front here and all the way down my spine. And later on, we also found several points in the front. But, but the thing is that when we were going to take, the, we were trying to put all the minus on at the same time, when you're we going to take the picture, problem is that these minds, they are small and they are strong. So if they're getting too close, they'll okay. like this. So it, that was impossible. So we were trying to take a picture at the time and then putting this together as one picture instead. Uh, and later on, we were thinking, okay, we shall try to make some new pictures. And then this was around, I guess, two years later 
then some of the points, they were no longer active. So, but then we disappeared that other points were active instead. So I had no idea. Uh, most likely they are not uh, iron, but in some, what they are made of, I had no idea. Okay. They have been talking about that, that they have been becoming more and more organic. Uh, I also know that I think there was Daryl uh, who said that they have been operating out uh, very, 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 very small black, <laughs> much smaller than a rice corn out of people. And uh, of course, but after we were doing this magnet thing, then we were thinking, okay, we need to take some x-rays. So with my friend from UFO Norway, uh, then we were using his chiropractor because he had his private x-ray machine. So I went in there, or they were sneaking me in the back door. They did not even put my name in the protocols or the, or the, or, or the lists, anything. They were just in, take the picture, out. Here's the CD. So there were no looking at it and everything. So there was, so my CD was sent over to the US for studying over there. And then they found different, all of these small black spots when they were zooming in big time. And the funny thing is that under my heart, they actually found three of them, like a triangle okay. thing. So, uh, and in my family, we have always had a very, very high blood pressure. And a lot of people in my family has died just passing the 50. So because of this, and uh, I had an incredibly high blood pressure. And uh, my doctor said that I want you to start on tablets. And I said, nope, I'm not going to have any tablets. I see how many tablets my mother is eating and that I don't want to follow her footsteps. I want to do this myself. And I have done it. Okay. So I'm now back to a normal BP, um, you know, that... Um, what are you calling it? When when you can feel your heart is out of rhythm, okay, and it feels like it's really twisting and turning in a bad way. Okay. I had that several times a day, and my BP was it was on one surgery I had. I was at the end of the surgery. The doctor said to me that you need to get that fixed because I was 180 over 120. Normal is 120 over. 80, 76 or 70 or? That's the normal. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. So it, and that was under anesthesia. Oh boy, okay. So I can just imagine how high it has been in those times I have been really feeling bad. Yeah. But uh, I don't do that anymore. Okay. I have fixed this myself and I'm going to continue fixing my body myself. Good, power to you. I was running, so you found a lot of implants on the on your upper body. Anything around the knees or, or the feet? I haven't looked. Oh, there you go. Part two. <laughs> the other thing is that I'm quite lazy when it comes to things like this. Okay. Of course, I, I, have, I have, as I said, I have been joking about this for years. And now I have this, I, I think I have counted enough. I don't need to know if there are any more. Oh. Uh, there is someone that was joking some years back that the way they are placed, you, you are like a walking, talking an antenna. And I was thinking that, hmm, perhaps that's the reason why I am getting all the downloads and all the experiencing things so easily. Yeah. I don't know. Now you've, uh, so let's finish with the, one of the last chapters of your book. Uh, you, you had a, like a, a UFO experience and a healing yeah, uh, in 2018, I was in Bulgaria with my friend Alin Strand. Um, there, was, there was this uh, university in Bulgaria that was having these conferences there. And um, back in those days, I was, I was so bad. In, in my, my shape was so bad, of course, then back in those days because of the high blood pressure. And I was also so lucky that the one week before I was going to fly, I was having a little fly down the staircase out here. So I was taking my, my right ankle. So uh, <laughs> I had to jump around on crutches. So I was, a, what a sight. So uh, I was down there in the conference and I was talking with some of the other speakers there and he looked at me and said, why don't you ask your helpers for help? 
And I said, okay, well, I did that a lot before, but i am some kind of forgotten it. I just disappeared from my mind actually by uh, doing it. So uh, I went back into my hotel room and I lay down on the bed and I was thinking, okay, my helpers, please help me. I need to do something with this so I will continue being on this planet. Because the night before, I felt so bad that if I actually was at home in Norway, I would have called the ambulance. But since I was there down a hotel in Bulgaria, I was hoping badly that I would survive the night and I, I would not make any fuss or problem with, for anyone. So that's the reason why I was telling this to my other co-speaker there. So, but I was back to the bed. I was lying there on my bed and I was relaxing. And then suddenly out of the blue, it was like something physical was just like this, touching my knees, dragging their hands down my legs and my feet like that. And of course, I knew I was alone in the room, so I was lying there, relaxed, and wow, looking around, what, what was this? I could not see anyone. I think, okay, well, there is some kind of a helpers trying to help me then. So I lay back down again, and this happened two, three times, and of course, I was looking around and seeing if, if I could see anything, but nothing. And then it stopped. And later on, then I went back downstairs to the other speakers and the other people in, in the hotel. Then they were, someone was talking about that. Someone has seen an UFO above the hotel. So was that a coincidence? I don't know, but I did feel better. Wow. But, but for me, uh, the best experience I had with the entire trip was actually when I was going back home because we had to go up in the middle of the night and our plane, I think it was around half past four, early in around five-ish, I think, when, when our flight took off. And most people at that time in the day, they are, or in the morning, they are so tired. And of course, you are, for some reason, you are supposed to have the blindfolds on the windows down when, when you're flying. Yeah. I didn't. Everyone else had a down. I was, I love to have my face close to the window and look at the nature underneath. You could see the clouds and you can see the sun that was coming up from behind the plane. And you can see how there was coloring the, the, yeah, the clouds and everything. So when I'm sitting here and then suddenly I'm seeing this craft thing coming in the opposite direction far away from over there, we were going this way, this one was coming this way. If our plane was here, this craft was kind of here. And so I was sitting there and I was thinking, that, hmm, okay, no wings, no tail, I could really study it. It was like two airplanes passing like this with a little distance like this. So when this was coming here, and it irritates me. I'm super frustrated about, about this topic even till today because since I was jumping around on crutches, my bag with my phone was up there above my head and I could not reach it. Because if I could have my mobile phone, <laughs> that could have been the film of a century. Okay. Yeah. Because I was sitting there and I was watching this thing coming and it was that close that if there was windows and there was a pilot sitting in there, I could have seen the pilot. But the thing is that this thing, it was like a bullet kind of shaped, but it was, it was flat in the bottom. And it was so silver and shiny that the sun was reflecting from the snow and back. And then there, you could see no signs of doors or windows or anything. It was just like smooth all over. And it, has, it, and it was not in a hurry. It was just gliding like this. So I was looking at it when it was coming from there and I was following it all the way till it disappeared in the opposite direction. I wanted to tell my friend that was sitting there, but of course we just had this tiny little window and I was a little selfish, I admit that, but I would not lose the eyesight of this thing by changing my view to do something else. 
but I really wish I could share that moment with my friend next to me because it was a wow and so shiny. But mom, perhaps that moment was for you and you only. Perhaps. Because. Uh, uh, but, but I know, I know 100% sure that if we could go back into the pilot's loggings, that that craft would have been logged into the pilot's yeah. thing. Absolutely. So yeah. Wow. They were not in a hurry. We were having the straight speed that way. That one having the straight speed that way. Wow. It was just like two planes passing each other. But of course, with a little bit difference like this. But uh, no did hurry, you, no rush. Did you like determine how big it was? <laughs> yeah, you, you can say it was more or less the same as... Um, Of course, there was a little distance, but not not that distance. Uh, I will say the same as a um, um, normal plane body, but without the wings and the, okay. and the tails. Okay. And of course, a little bit since you don't have a long tail back, it's a little bit more like the bread thing. It's a little bit higher, a little bit more compact. You don't have the snout no, no, no. in the front, so it was a little bit more like this this kind of. Okay. And like that, and a flat in the bottom. Oh, okay, really. So, okay, yeah, I get what you're looking at. Wow. And it was shiny, metallic, so yeah, beautiful. It was so silver. There was no lines at all. And, and, and the sun was reflecting back. So it was actually a nice, pretty view when you were looking at it. Okay, wow. You, 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 I, I can put it like that way. You know, people that are love, loving their cars or their motorbikes with the chrome, the, if they have seen that, they will be, they will have been drooling because of, oh, <laughs> can you imagine cleaning that thing to make that thing that shiny? Yeah. Well, uh, I had so much fun tonight. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it was fun to join in. Yeah, and I really like that you you use the the magnets uh, live. Uh, really happy looking at those. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. When I saw you, the you sent me the images of the. Of you wearing everything, I thought, oh my gosh, she has a lot of implants. But to have it <laughs> shown live, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so it's a, new, uh, it's, it's a new party trick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing that on parties. No, I'm, I'm not even talking about this topic if, if I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, to those watching, hope you enjoyed uh, tonight's show. Uh, more interviews coming up, and I'll see you guys next, next time. So, take care, everyone. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Gray and thanks for watching today's episode. If you are an abductee, contactee or experiencer and you believe that your story could help others, please feel free to contact me through my YouTube channel email. When it comes to experiencers, the ET phenomena and the future, remember, truth will out.